What's up, what's up, guys? What's going on? Welcome to episode number 19 of the Spun Today podcast. I'm your host, Tony Ortiz. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, let's see. This is going to be another free writing session episode, which if you guys aren't familiar with or if this is the first episode that you're listening to of the Spun Today podcast, um, I'm not going to explain it each and every time. Uh, that I do one of these things, what each episode is. So if you listen to it, you'll find out. <laughs> and uh, another type of episode that I do aside from these are uh, my version of short story audiobooks. There's these uh, short stories that I write or that I have written. And you can listen to, uh, I'm sorry, you can read them at uh, spuntoday.com forward slash short stories. And then I put out. Uh, my version of an audiobook for those short stories. Uh, each episode is usually broken down into an intro, followed by the short story, and then an outro. And uh, the intro and outro is uh, unedited, uh, just like uh, this uh, free writing session podcast, which is in its entirety unedited, um, because that uh, uh, you know, like rugged, raw uh, feel is. Uh, my favorite, uh, I would say, like component, I guess, of a podcast uh, that like realness and authenticity that seems to come with with the podcast that I like most, and I want that to be true with it, with this one as well. Uh, but the actual in the short story episodes that that uh, the audiobook episodes rather that I've put out, uh, the portion of the actual short story is actually edited. Um, I try to make it all, you know, like fancy and fucking like professional ish, <laughs> you know, and I have like no training whatsoever in terms of like, you know, audiobooks or editing or anything like that. So it's pretty much what I piece together and what I've Googled and stuff like that. Um, I try to edit, like edit out all the mistakes and, and stuff and, you know, try to make it seem like a, a legit audiobook, uh, like the audiobooks that I've listened to in the past and um it's a short story so they're not too long they're like 15 20 minutes long and i also add uh like sound effects and shit like that where appropriate to try to add uh a little depth and uh layers to the episodes and uh that's pretty much it those are if you want to check out any of those uh, that there's like five or six of them uh that i've recorded uh if you go back into the feed obviously they're all they're all free you can listen to them whenever you like and each of them has the title of the short story followed by audiobook in parentheses and uh check those out let me know what you guys think about those uh so what's new this uh this week this past weekend uh, on friday actually on april 17th um very happy uh to report that i actually met joe rogan uh, Ari Shafir and Tony Hinchcliffe. I went to their show um, at the uh, Manhattan Theater uh, here in New York City, and um, it was awesome. I uh, had a great time with my fiance, and it was um, like the best time I've had in a while, which is pretty cool. And I obviously, like, I know from listening to to Rogan's podcast that he. Uh, He normally, like, has, like, a photographer there and and shit like that. And, you know, there's these, like, long-ass lines of people that want to take pictures. And back in the day, like, that all got, got, like, out of hand and stuff. And people were, you know, taking pictures with their their camera phones. And it was, they were fumbling it and didn't know how to use it when somebody else was using their camera phone on, on uh, the camera on their phone, rather. And shit like that. And things just got sloppy. So uh, he wound up getting like a a photographer from what I remember and you know making it more like assembly line ish and you know just to you know get rid of the the unnecessary confusion and stuff like that and uh, move things along because you know you have a few a couple hundred people waiting for you to take pictures that shit could take forever I would imagine Uh, so uh, that's what I was expecting like going into it um after the after the show and uh I uh Actually, oh, I, I bumped into a good buddy of mine. Shout out to Dan uh, and his fiance over there at the at the uh, at the show. Coincidentally, 
he knows that I'm a, a fan of, of Rogan's podcast, and he actually texted me while he was there that he, he was going to see Rogan tonight, and I was like, oh, shit, so am I. Um, and we met up, had a couple of drinks by the bar, and uh, caught up a little bit, so that was pretty cool. But uh, back to the story. So then we uh, were there, you know, we watched the show. Tony Hinchcliffe opened up, uh, which was fucking hilarious. Ari is always uh, being uh, probably my favorite comic. Um, between him and uh, Bill Burr, um, I would say are like my two favorite comics. Um, uh, was awesome. Was an awesome surprise. I was actually thinking that Duncan, uh, for some reason, I thought I heard on the podcast that that Rogan said that Duncan was opening up for him in New York. Um, uh, I don't know if he Duncan Trussell, if uh, he couldn't make it or like whatever the case is, or maybe I just misheard. Um, but uh, it was Tony Hinchcliffe and Ari. So that was pretty cool. And then, uh, of course, Rogan headlined it, and it was just a, an awesome show. So I'm expecting afterwards to, um, to you know, uh, be confronted with, like, a line of hundreds of people and a professional photographer and, like, that type of scene. And after the show, uh, we we all go down to the first floor because the show, uh, the theater... Um, was actually on the seventh floor uh, of that building, of uh, the Manhattan Theater, and um, we go to the the first floor, everybody, and everybody starts lining up, and there's like a shitload of people. And then uh, after a couple minutes, the security guard comes out, uh, one of the security guards that are there, and they say that there's not going to be any any pictures today. If everybody can please exit the building, um, they're not going to take. Uh, um, any pictures, Mr. Rogan's not coming down, uh, they left already, blah, 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 shit like that, so, obviously, I was like, fuck, man, <laughs> that fucking sucks, because I, obviously, I wanted the opportunity to, to meet him, and, uh, it was, yeah, and it was actually, like, three years in the making, or some shit like that, um, because I remember the first, when I first got into the podcast, like, three or four years ago, I, like, looked out for his tour dates and stuff like that, to see when he was going to be in New York, and, um, I actually saw that, so at the, like that first year, like after a year of listening to the podcast and I was like, oh, let me, let me, uh, get tickets for the show. And then like, I kept putting it off and didn't do it. I figured, you know, I just, you know, pick up tickets like the, the weekend before or whatever. And then when I go to check, it was sold out. And, um, then after that, it was like, I checked like on StubHub or something and the tickets were, I don't know, like something I couldn't afford. <laughs> and that didn't make sense so i was like fuck it next time i go and i didn't know that it's fucking like every year or something he comes out to to new york and shit like that so um like a year later he happened to to come again and it happened to fall on my mother's birthday so you know it wasn't gonna be a, a douchebag son to say i'm gonna go see joe rogan on my birthday oh no your birthday rather uh so i didn't go that time and then uh, this year, I, I bought the tickets like fucking so far in advance that I forgot that I actually had them um, until the date got closer. Uh, I bought it like like two and a half, maybe three months uh, before, um, as soon as it was like announced on the website or whatever, like a, the fucking fanboy that I am. So, excuse me, I'm trying to drink some some tea with uh, with honey to see if that helps because. I keep like losing my voice when I'm doing these things, and um, and it sucks. Um, especially for you guys, I would imagine like it sucks to listen to like a like a gravelly, gravelly sounding voice like that. Um, so then, so we're there. We're in the first floor of the theater. Everybody's like, "Oh fuck!" All pissed off and shit like that. And then I overhear this kid uh, speaking with his boys. Uh, this kid that I actually saw. I saw uh, a few months back, I saw Joey Diaz at the Gotham, and I saw the same dude there, and, uh, and I recognized him from there, and, and he recognized me or whatever, and or I think he did, um, and, uh, uh, you know, kind of did like the head nod type of thing, and um, I overheard him say to one of his boys, he was like, oh, it's bullshit, he's, you know, he's still up there on the seventh floor, he tweeted it, and I was like, hmm. So I step back, I tell, tell my fiance, hold on a second, you know, because we were about to bounce. And uh, I checked Twitter and um, he did, uh, uh, Joe actually tweeted 
that he wasn't going anywhere for anybody who just left the show that uh to go back to the showroom that he's going to be there he's going to take pictures and shit like that so um obviously i want to make my way you know back upstairs but there's still people like pouring down the stairs on both sides uh of the building the two uh staircases that are there and the elevator takes like forever in a day um uh to come back down plus we have the security guards like literally like six or seven of them like trying to empty out the the hallway or uh the lobby rather and so it's like fuck man so it's like a race between the security security guards coming towards us and like kicking us out and the elevator actually opening up and uh we got on the elevator and we we went up and uh they, we got up there there was like like maybe like two dozen people there you know like everybody hadn't like caught on yet um so it was pretty empty and then the guys come out from the back joe comes out ari comes out tony comes out and it was pretty fucking cool man um everybody was there for a while um just like shooting the shit and saying what's up and taking pictures and and um it was pretty dope man it was fucking cool it was was like a a little surreal because i am a total fanboy of all those guys and um especially especially joe who uh you know like because of his, his podcast um and you know things that he's put me on like uh the war of art book by Stephen Pressfield that I've spoken about a lot before and things like that is why I be I got reconnected with uh with writing and started this podcast and fucking found out what a podcast is and shit like that so it was it was pretty cool you know and the actually the first podcast that I ever listened to was uh the Joe Rogan experience and his guest was actually Ari and I always credit Ari um, just as much as Joe because I feel that that it wasn't just um, like Joe's show, but the the way the conversation flowed between the two really made me um, like a fan of this like new thing that I'm listening to um, of you know podcast that I hadn't heard of before. Then well, I've heard the word podcast before, but I didn't really have an understanding of what it was. And just uh, like I mentioned before, like that raw like rugged um authentic thing um that is true to to podcasts uh, that i i connect with so much um i experienced it like there within that conversation for the first time and it was awesome man um i actually had uh like this whole like mini like little speech uh prepared that i was like rehearsing in my mind and shit um to tell joe like when i had like a couple seconds uh while taking a picture and um what i wanted to say <laughs> which uh, it didn't come out exactly like it but I, i'm actually happy with what what i told him because uh, normally i, I would have like choked under the pressure or something and um you know just been like hi how are you and take a picture and say thank you and like run away or some shit like that um but what i wanted to say was something along the lines of uh, I just wanted to let you know that because of you and the podcast and putting me onto the war of art, it's reconnected me with writing and I even started my own podcast and uh, I just want to let you know that because of that and the those experiences that I've had um, uh, from listening to the podcast, it's put me on a path that I know will eventually change my life and I'm eternally grateful for that. Um, that's what I wanted to say and <laughs> what I... What I wound up saying, which was pretty much that, is, uh, or was, um, uh, you know, and I, and I blur, blurted it out, like, kind of quickly at first, and I was like, uh, I just want to let you know that I, you know, because of you and the podcast and putting me onto the war of art, I started my own podcast, and I started writing again, and I just want to say thank you for that, and which was pretty much that so, so, it sounded better and more polished the, the first time around. But, um, like at first you could tell, cause you know, everybody like I'm, I'm watching everybody online and everybody's giving him a ear beating about, you know, different shit. Like, Oh, I do jujitsu now. And Oh, I do this. And then like, like things that, that I've heard of before, um, that I've heard mentioned before, uh, you know, people that say that, you know, he changed that, their lives and like stuff like that. And I know it's like part of, like the i guess it probably sounds to him like the broken record of uh jre fans at this point but um 
and you know and also like i saw this one guy like pitching him something and like trying to give him a business card and and he's like in a suit and you know he has like another guy with him that you know seems like his client or i don't know what the fuck he was but um like those type of like annoying assholes like that or uh, not assholes i don't know the guy you shouldn't call him an asshole but you know those type of like opportunists i guess that try to like capitalize like on on that type of situation um when it really shouldn't be that type of situation i think in my opinion but whatever teach his own um so part of me is like fuck from his point of view he's like hearing this type of shit and just like fending off like the people and and stuff and then um uh but he was super nice he was, he was like super cool like when i mentioned that i started my, my own podcast he he kind of like like i don't want to say like let his guard down but it, it kind of wasn't like the like he wasn't going through the motions it felt like like the yeah yeah hi yeah yeah hi um he was he he like stopped and looked at me he was like oh shit really that's cool man um good for you or something like that then uh we took the picture and and that was pretty much it shook his hand again and it was pretty dope um what else then like i mentioned ari was the first first episode that i ever listened to a brogan's podcast that was like episode like one i want to say 80 something or 90 something like around there and i've been a, a fan of ari's ever since um love his style of comedy is like one of my favorite styles of comedy i would say like i feel like i really like get him and i also feel like he wasn't that popular at all when um uh when he was going on a rogan's po- on rogan's podcast and like opening up for rogan and shit like that and now he's like in the midst of like blowing the fuck up and like that feels cool too you know it's kind of like like uh like something i knew about like before anybody else kind of thing um you know he has a couple shows uh he has his his uh special on comedy central he has a show on comedy central and um his podcast is like a a really popular podcast you guys should listen to it it's pretty awesome it's called the skeptic tank podcast with ari shafir and um it's pretty cool and him i actually saw before i'm uh i saw him at the stand um, when he was doing like one of his workout sets and um actually uh i picked up my skirt and grabbed my balls and and went up to him in the bar and uh like you know introduced myself shook his hand told him i'm a big fan of the podcast and um positive he doesn't remember that but um it was cool i, I always like regretted not getting a picture with him and um because again remember i'm a like a picture guy and shit um and it was pretty cool that when i met rogan got the picture with rogan ari was there and he was like super cool about it um which i didn't think he was gonna be because he says he doesn't like taking pictures and shit but he was probably like high as fuck (laughs) and uh he was like super cool about it laid back about it um took a picture and um and yeah it was a pretty awesome fucking experience also uh, tony henchcliffe was like an added bonus he's super cool i like him on the podcast too uh he has a cool podcast called kill tony where um uh aspiring comics go up and they do uh, I don't remember if it's a 30 second or like a one minute, uh, they have one minute to do comedy basically. And then, um, uh, Tony Henchcliffe, which is a professional comic, obviously, um, Brian Redband. And sometimes they have like other guests, like, like they'll have Joe on and stuff like that. Like they get to critique and give pointers on the person's comedy that's trying to give, uh, or like just gave them like a minute's worth of comedy, uh, which much must be like super like tough to do you know what i mean because i mean what can you do like tell like a couple knock knock jokes and try to make them laugh or something like that you know what i mean like you can't really build up that momentum that it takes to like set up a an actual joke and and stuff like that because you only have a minute you know what i mean so it's a it's a cool concept and i like listening to that one also and tony was cool i, I was just like a, a like a kid in a candy store at that point, um, didn't really know, like, what to say or whatever, went up to him, uh, you know, told him I had, I, um, I had a good time, and, um, first, <laughs> the first retarded thing that afterwards, I was like, oh, man, <laughs> uh, first thing that I thought of to say was, hey, Tony Hanscliffe, what's up, man, my name's Tony, too, <laughs> and then he was like, 
he he said something like, "Oh, is it? Love it, man. I love it." Which is pretty much like, "Okay, like congratulations. Your name is Tony too." You know what I mean? Like I felt like <laughs> like that, but he was like super nice also. And um and it was cool, man. It was a really cool experience. I had a good time. My fiance had a, had a good time also. She had fun. And um, she loved Tony Hitchcock. Um, that was her favorite one, her favorite comic uh, that night. So overall, a uh, really great experience. And I uh, recommend it to any of you guys to check any of those guys out whenever you can. Um, again, like I said earlier, Rogan's here like once a year or some shit like that. Uh, Tony Hinchcliffe is um, not sure about like his like touring schedule or anything like that. I know he opens up for Rogan. I don't know what he does aside from that. Um, well, I know he tours or does the road um, aside from that, but um, I'm not sure about his schedule. So um, all those guys have websites you can check out. Ari, you can see here on the East Coast, at least, like more readily, because he like moves to New York for like during the summertime and, and stuff like that. And um, all these comics, like they're always doing workouts. Like this is their job. Um, something that I... I've come to to learn from listening to their podcast and stuff of a bunch of these different comics that I listen to is that this is their job. This is like, you know, how like we have or some of you, including myself, have like nine to fives that, you know, we go clock in or whatever. Um, They do this for a living. They do comedy for a living. And it's not just, you know, uh, write out your jokes in front of your computer or in a notebook and then, you know, call hbo and say hey i'm ready to film an hour in front of the camera to for you to put on hbo or netflix or or comedy central or whatever they have to very gruelingly and um uh i tip my hat to them uh for doing so have to work out their material like every night or you know four or five nights a week they're going to all the comedy comedy you know small comedy clubs uh, within the town, I know uh, the cellar is like a big, a big one here in New York for um, working out, um, working out new material, uh, as they call it, like workout sets, where you know they write a joke, how would they write it, and um, they get stage time, they get fifteen minutes, half an hour, to like try shit out, and um, you know Wednesday nights, Thursday nights, Fridays, Saturdays, you know shit like that, um, at these little comedy clubs, um, Gotham is another one. The Stand, which is where, if I'm not mistaken, that's where I saw Ari um, last year. And uh, what else? And th- there's a bunch of other ones here in New York. So uh, being that he's here, he, you know, he's working out all the time. I'm sure you, you could look up um, on his on his website where, you know, where he'll be. And um, his website is alreadythegreat.com. And Joe Rogan's website is joerogan.net. And Tony Hinchcliffe's website, I do not know. Um, but I feel like a dick for not knowing that. Tony, so let me look it up right now. Tony Hinchcliffe is TonyHinchcliffe.com. Very, very clever <laughs> website name. It's Tony Hinchcliffe is spelled H-I-N-C-H-C-L-I-F-F-E.com. And I'm sure his tour dates and shit like that is on there if you guys are interested. And um, what else? Aside from that, what have I been up to? Uh, like I told you guys before, I'm practicing for the Five Borough Tour, uh, which is a, a bike tour uh, throughout New York City. It's five boroughs uh, as uh, it uh, gives away in its uh, title. And it's a 45-mile uh, bike tour between 40 and 45 miles. I think it's like 42 or some shit like that. Uh, I did it last year for the first time. It was dope. Um, I'm continuing to practice for it. It's coming up in about two weeks. I got one more practice run, which I'm going to be doing this upcoming Sunday. Uh, last Saturday I went out again and I did, uh, um, 25 miles on the, along the belt parkway, um, between like Queens and Brooklyn and, uh, Brooklyn. Um, and it was pretty cool. It was like an awesome day. It was really, like a really nice day. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, my goal this week, this is the final week. My goal is to hit at least 25. Um, try to bring it up to like 30 miles. 
uh, this weekend. And uh, most likely going to do the West Side Highway because that's uh, like my favorite favorite place to go. And I'm going to be doing it um, again with my boy Pablo. Uh, so shout out to him. And then uh, thereafter, it is uh, the following Sunday after that is the big day. And uh, uh, let keep you guys posted on that. Let you guys know how that went. And um, take pictures like I always do. Uh, try to get some uh, decent ones. Um, and uh, that'll be worth uh, putting up on the website. Um, or at least like on Instagram or some shit. Definitely I'll put some on there. But um, I try to keep the quote unquote nice ones on uh, on the website which is spuntoday.com forward slash photography if you want to check those out oh by the way i am buying myself for my birthday well not myself um from some uh, uh birthday gifts monetary birthday gifts that i've gotten i'm uh, pulling to pulling together some cash and i'm buying myself a new camera and it is because the camera that I had, my girl's friend dropped it in DR when we were there in uh, Santiago in front of El Monumento. Um, it was at night. We were having a couple of drinks and uh, somebody got overexcited and uh, wanted to take pictures and dropped my fucking camera and it broke, <laughs> which sucks. But... um. I I lo- I really like that camera too. It's a dope. It, it's it was a uh, a digital camera, um, but it was like according to the research that I did, which um, was like you know like CNET reviews and a bunch of reviews online, like reading reading through and stuff, um, was the closest you could get to a, a DSLR camera before crossing over um, into actually being a DSLR camera. Uh, the closest you could get to it while staying in the compact um uh, digital camera uh size i guess um because the fucking price that shit was still like like four four hundred i'm um, close to 500 bucks or something like that for that camera and it was awesome i really like it like oh, mostly all i would say like 95 percent of the pictures that are on the website right now on uh, sponsor.com forward slash photography if you guys want to take a look um we're taking with that camera and i mean to me to my untrained novice fucking amateur photographer eyes they look dope and i like them but now um i want to step up to uh to big boy camera and and get a an actual uh dslr camera and according to the reviews i've been reading and shit like that i am pretty sure and i'm set on the canon eos rebel sl1 uh digital dslr camera uh, digital SLR camera, and uh, again, that's the Canon EOS Rebel SL1, and this is supposed to be the uh, smallest, lightest uh, DSLR camera on the market, um, and uh, really awesome uh, quality, and um, and shit like that, so that's what I'm leaning towards, if anybody has any insight on that, uh, let me know, um, it actually comes in white, it's like a white and gray, and gray is actually my favorite color. Um, and I'm leaning towards that one because I think it looks cool. And I've never seen like a, a fucking white camera before. And um, most likely going to get that one. But again, if anybody has any insights or anything like that on a camera, camera choices, maybe another one that might be better um, to get, uh, let me know. But uh, that's what I'm leaning towards. So. Yeah, if you guys want to see some of the pictures that I have taken again, go on the website, spuntoday.com forward slash photography and check those out. Or you can check out my Instagram uh, at spuntoday on Instagram and uh, see some pictures on there, um, which also include like the, uh, the pictures I took with uh, Joe Rogan and, and Ari and Tony Hinchcliffe uh, are on there as well. I also tweeted the fuck out of them <laughs> like a little fanboy. Uh, you can uh, check out my Twitter feed at Spun Today, and um, probably on Facebook too, because it like automatically goes from like my Twitter's connected to my Facebook um, page for this thing, for the podcast, and that's uh, f- uh, Facebook.com 
forward slash spun today so you can uh, check all those things out for that stuff um what else what else before i do the free writing session part oh you know what i wanted to do what i was thinking about doing let me know if you guys let me know what you guys think um probably gonna do it anyway just to see see if i get any feedback on it i want to do uh like aside from the free writing episodes and um the audiobook episodes i've also done like not interview episodes but like i guess um just like free-flowing conversation episodes uh in the past like my fiance has been on it my uh my brother's been on it a couple times and i want to do more of those but wanted to to uh gear them you know uh stay consistent with the whole like writing theme of the podcast and and um uh see if i get any any like new writers or established writers or like whatever that want to uh that want to be on the podcast and you know speak about their 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 personal journey with writing or give any tips or creative advice and stuff like that to myself and uh anybody else who's interested in writing so if anybody would be interested uh to be on the spun today podcast which one day will be the most awesome podcast on the net uh, reach out to me at uh spun today at what is it what's the email address spun today at gmail.com or go to spun today.com forward slash contact and um fill out the little contact page thing hit me up through there and let me know and it doesn't have to be like writers of um you know something specific uh like books or or short stories and poems and like shit like that anything anything creative that you write you know if you're a fucking battle rapper or something like that or or you know any, anything it takes anything to have anything to do with creativity and writing um would be cool to 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 uh speak with i also want to do uh aside from that open invitation that will be an open invitation for anybody that uh, listens to this whenever um hit me up and let me know but i want to see how i can integrate like into the website a a kind of like a survey a questionnaire survey kind of thing for kind of like the same purpose um i got the idea from another podcast that i listen to sometimes called the mental illness happy hour with paul gilmartin he has like a a survey of a few questions that some listeners fill out and send back to him and he reads them on the air and stuff um which is pretty cool because you know it doesn't put like any pressure it anonymizes it and it doesn't put any pressure on the particular um you know people that might not want to be on the actual podcast speaking and shit like that but they do have something to say and uh they can do it that way you know he reads it out um i'm thinking of putting together something like that something quick you know like a two or three question thing um again uh you know geared towards writing and shit like that um so if anybody's interested in that it doesn't exist yet but it will it will um uh, because i want to see what that what kind of attention that type of thing would generate and what kind of advice you know i can gain from that and um and any listeners of the podcast now or in the future uh like my half a dozen listeners uh, <laughs> that might be able to gain some knowledge or um some motivation or inspiration like from something like that so if any of you crazy kids out there want to get in on the ground floor and uh fill out one of these uh surveys i'll post them on the site and uh tweet out links and shit like that and um have me read them on the air uh while there's only half a dozen listeners of the podcast uh before it gets doubled and blows up to a full dozen then uh fill one of those things out (laughs) and we'll take it from there all right guys that's uh pretty much it for the intro for my 34 minute intro (laughs) um you know follow me in, on all the places that i told you guys also there is a, a youtube page now which you can get to at uh, spuntoday.com uh the website all the way at the bottom it has links for uh youtube uh, you can listen to all these podcasts on youtube uh there's a uh what's it called uh tumblr uh tumblr page spuntodaypodcast.tumblr.com uh, there's a link on on the website also 
Um, also, you can subscribe to the newsletter on there to uh, keep in touch and know whenever any of these uh, episodes come out, which is pretty much every other Thursday. So if you don't want to sign up for the newsletter, you don't have to. <laughs> and um, uh, what else? Twitter, Instagram, I'll give you guys that. Uh, please rate and review the podcast on iTunes and or Stitcher. That is very helpful uh, to anybody within the podcast community. You know that. And uh, it would be cool if you guys like it, you know, um, fucking review it, (laughs) rate and review it on iTunes and or Stitcher. All right, guys, I have all right to the free writing session portion of the podcast Should do some like fucking (laughs) transitional music or something like that. Right. In between the thing, like with the with the audiobook uh, episodes. I do an intro, then I do like that same warp sounding sound that I have in my intro music thing, um, which, by the way, is provided by free free sfx dot co dot uk. It's a, like a website that has a shitload of like sound effects and stuff like that um, that are free, free what's it called? Free license free or something like that. I think it's called where you know. If you get fucking famous or something, use their shit as long as you uh, give them credit for it and list it with it. Um, they can't sue you and shit, basically. Um, license free, I think it's called. Um, but yeah, like that little, well, like warp sound. I use that to separate the intro from the actual audiobook and then the audiobook from the outro when I do those episodes. But when I do these free writing ones, I just like flow into it um whatever the i'm gonna go over two posts that i posted up on 420 420 uh april 20th and uh, if you guys want to read along uh the way this works is uh one of the portions of my website is uh called free writing it's uh my favorite form of writing where pretty much just sit down with maybe a thought in your mind of something you want to write about or explore or just you have nothing in mind um but you just sit down to do it and once you start writing like shit just starts coming up to the surface and you start writing about stuff and i find it cathartic and insightful and i've spoken about it a bunch of times before so i'm not going to bore you guys with that um pretty much i read some of these that i recently posted to the website um but that i wrote uh a while back and uh, just to share it with you guys, one and two, for me myself to reflect on it, because I usually don't read these things after I write them, um, and kind of see like where my mind uh, was at then and where I'm at now, like within the context of of like whatever it is that I wrote then. So, if you guys want to read along, and there's a bunch of all the other ones that all of the older ones that I've read on the on the podcast are on here also. Um, you guys can go to spuntoday.com forward slash free writing and, uh, check those out. I'm going to be reading the top two. Once you get to there, uh, to the website, the top two, one of them, uh, the, uh, the second one uh, that I'm going to, which is where I'm going to start is, uh, was posted on April 20th, 2015. And is titled, What's Your Music Sound Like? And I wrote, A writer's block session is what I'm going to call these. When I have nothing to say, but that nothing still needs to come out. I already have more than I thought I would. The pen just needs to touch the paper. If even for practice sake. For writing endurance for better penmanship at the very least. Point is that the work alone yields something. Quote, a life lived for art is never a life wasted. Unquote. That, by the way, is from, uh, I think it's a lyric from uh, Macklemore and Lewis from their like first album or second album or something like that. Uh, back to what I was saying. Or reading, rather. Uh... The pen touching the paper is like the needle of a vinyl record player. 
fucked that one up. Let me read that again. <laughs> the pen touching the paper is like the needle of a vinyl record player. The paper's like the record, and the muse feeding the words is the music. Without fail, it's always there for you. When you make it, blah. without fail, it's always there for you. When you make yourself able to do the work and put your pen to the paper. What's your music sound like? I'm fine tuning mine. Wrote that on Thursday, May 9th, 2013 at 1.10 a.m. <clears throat> All right, so. Hmm. I. You know what I'd like from this? The. Like the like two or three sentences in where it says uh, the pen just needs to touch the paper, blah, blah, blah. If even for practice sake, for writing endurance, for better penmanship at the very least. Um, I like that, that writing endurance part. Um, because one of the, like the biggest battles that, that I know is common throughout all all writers and I'm not sure if it if this spills over to you know like painters and other forms of art as well or um not necessarily like quote-unquote art this sounds like so pretentious to to call it that but just um in general whatever the fuck it is that you're into doing um that you like doing that you want to be doing um but is more like a hobby as opposed to like your actual job because uh something that's common like a common thread throughout is that it's tough to like sit down and do the work and like do that work like it's hard for me and i've heard many many times over from other people that write uh that it's tough for them to sit down and actually actually like cross that barrier between like doing something else and sitting down and focusing their mind and saying okay now i'm going to write doing that like that piece of it is tough as shit and it sucks and it sucks that it's like that but it's so necessary to put in that work uh once you're doing it because like anything else that's how you're gonna get anywhere right um putting in the work and doing work um and steven pressfield actually has another book uh aside from the war of art which deals with resistance and like this type of thing, uh, but called more focused on, you know, um, ending procrastination and uh, doing the work. And it's called, I, I think it's literally called do the work or doing the work, something like that. And I read it. It's like a really short read. Um, it's pretty cool and motivating also. Um, <clears throat> but I particularly like that because of something else that I heard recently that my uh, brother put me on to actually it was a Zane Lowe interview with not the one with Eminem that I spoke about before on one of these uh, fri- free writing episodes but one that he did with Rick Rubin which um, I only listened to the piece so far I keep meaning to go back I'll probably listen to it like the full interview tonight after after recording this thing um, but I've been meaning to go back to listen to the full interview because Rick Rubin is like like a really influential uh dude in in all of music uh for those of you that don't know uh, who rick rubin is he's the founder of def jam uh he's done he's produced tracks for like jay-z and shakira and uh fucking eminem of course and and metallica slipknot fuck like different genres like a bunch of different people adele shakira kanye and like fucking popular shit too not no fucking like b-track fucking on the b-side of the fucking mixtape type fucking uh, tr- uh music either like for jay-z it was like 99 problems for shakira's hips don't lie um berserk for eminem like dope shit um again like co-founded def jam uh really influential dude and he said about uh one of the things that he said about eminem Aside from the fact that he agree, he's a, he agrees that he's the dopest to ever do it ever, and um, which motivated me that much more. By the way, I'm not. I know I'm going off on a tangent, but it motivated me that much more to 
uh, begin to put together the uh, Ode to Eminem podcast that I've been speaking about for a while um, that I've mentioned in the past before that I've begun to to write ideas down for of how I want to lay it out and how I want to do it. And um, this uh, that portion of the interview will definitely be like the part of the intro for that episode or or I think it's going to um, from what I started um Piecing together is probably going to be like a two to three episode thing. Um, and uh, and really need to start putting in the work for that shit. But um, I have the, like that uh, blueprint uh, done for it. Uh, so like I was saying, the something that he said about Eminem, which is reminding me of this, that, that sentence of um, to write at least for like practice sake or for like writing endurance is that he mentioned that <clears throat> M writes all the time. He carries, like, these notebooks, which, you know, he's, like, known for. And, you know, every inch of every sheet of paper is, like, is written on. And it looks like a fucking, like, a crazy man's fucking, um, like, writing and stuff. That he, he said that M writes, like... N- so much and he carries these notebooks around and he's always writing and shit like that and that he knows that he himself knows um not rick rubin that eminem himself knows that like 98 percent of all the shit that he writes is never going to be used and it's not going to be usable but he does it um he's such like a madman in terms of uh, writing all the time that um because he wants his facility to be there for when he does need it he wants to, when he goes to write, um, like, f- quote, unquote, for real, or, like, writing for a, p- a particular project or something like that, he wants it to feel like practice because he's been doing it so much all along. And that's why he's so fucking dope, you know what I mean? Like, he's always consistently working on his shit. And um, I think that's true for what I want to do. Um and probably for, for, like I said, a lot of other things. If you don't put in the work, you're not going to get to where it is that you envision yourself being. Um, and that's definitely true with writing. Uh, I used to do it once in a blue. And, and uh, you know, like back in the day, you always like used to like kind of sort of dabble in it and, you know, write little things here and there, write letters or write poems or write um, uh, just like really get into the writing aspect or, or like the wording and the wordplay like whenever I used to like write essays in school and like shit like that uh, but never never like took it seriously um, like the way I am now uh, with the podcast and uh, with the website and you know putting up um, some of the pieces that I free wrote like the like this one and um, from there it developed uh, short stories and all of it is like like gelling together you know what i mean i feel like and it's like beginning to gain momentum and it's pushing me to want to do more and more and um and because i'm putting in that that uh work which is you know not some like mad crazy level of work because it's still like a hobby it's not like i'm doing this 24 7 but um and it's definitely more than i was doing before and i'm happy about that i'm proud of that and i want to continue building on that and like I've always said, uh, build this up into, uh, build up my writing into something incredible or, uh, and, or something that I can look back on and, and be happy about and proud of. And, um, uh, this is part of the journey, like towards that. So yeah, I definitely like, I like that, that, uh, sentence in there. And I guess, um, just like the the concept of, of this piece, which is which is turning that like writer's block moment into actually just writing, just for writing for writing's sake. You know what I mean? I've come to realize that like everything you write doesn't have to be a fucking masterpiece. It doesn't like you don't even have to like everything you write, and most of the shit that that I've written, in you know I have a a couple notebooks like in front of me right now of the other notebooks that I have like filled with shit that I I like am beginning to go through again um just to like find shit to post post on the website here and I'm like what the fuck is this retarded shit that I wrote (laughs) and it's um and 
but then like within there there's like shit like this which i actually i actually like and i look back on it and i'm like oh shit you know that's a good point or i like this and you know you kind of sort of have to get through get through like the bullshit and stuff like that and you're not gonna like the majority of it but without that stuff you're not gonna get to um the shit that you're gonna like and you're not gonna be able to like build up whatever it is that you're working on into something that you yourself will be proud of so um it's all part of it i think what the fuck do i know right all right that is that post and if you guys scroll up there is one more post which i am going to go over now also uh, posted on april 20th 2015 the title is we all get 24 hours and i wrote catch up mode you can't really make up for lost time it's over it's done but you can absolutely change your downward trajectory your downward trajectory and begin to aim upward get yourself into a groove into the zone your zone where only you can be a one person unique membership a one of a kind place whose replica doesn't exist it can't exist you make it what it is what it can be and what it can't be no more excuses find the time make the time for whatever it is that you need to do for you whatever goal you have begin to put in the work now no literally right now quote we all have 24 hours in a day unquote how will you choose to use yours and i wrote that on thursday may 9th 2013 at 8 12 a.m is that the same day that i wrote the oh shit yeah may 9th 2013 the other post was may 9th 2013 at 1 10 a.m um so i guess like you know like from the night time of the wednesday night or whatever i was up uh till 1 10 a.m or whatever writing this and then the next morning when i woke up i was still inspired like bill burr would say <laughs> and um woke up and wrote this at 8 12 a.m on a thursday I, unless i was off then that day or fucking which if i was off from work i probably wouldn't have been up at fucking eight o'clock that morning but most likely i was uh, getting ready to bounce to go to work and had a few extra minutes and decided to write this shit before I went to work. I've done that a couple of times before. And um, that's probably what happened that day. So, yeah. <clears throat> we all get 24 hours. I... You ever had those days that you... you like just knocking it out the park, like getting shit done. You run all your errands. You fucking watch a movie. You've you fucking write you fucking do extra shit you fucking um you know everything is just like gelling and falling into place and you're doing stuff and preparing things for the next day and just like getting shit done and then you have other days that you just can't seem to do shit you look at the time fucking 10 hours have passed you you're fucking still in your pajamas haven't done shit fucking remembered that there was something else you had to get your laundry and you never did and uh you were supposed to get a haircut you didn't do that and and just the day goes to shit that's fucking it's weird we all have days like that right like on either side and it's it's the same 24 hours in each scenario and it's just a matter of literally what you choose to to do with your time you can choose to continue putting shit off to uh continue waiting for something to happen for something else to happen for something to fall into place so that you can of uh, alleviate some other pressures and allow yourself the time to do this specific thing that you've been wanting to do but haven't done because of all this other shit that's in the way or you can stop making excuses and just fucking do whatever the fuck it is that it is that you want to do and 
that's what I mean by the uh, like the last couple of sentences there when when it says uh, um, begin to put in the work now no literally right now like it means like literally that like if you like I learned with this or I'm in the process of learning but something I picked up along the way with this whole you know like writing fucking journey that I'm on is that there's no there's no like set way to do something there's no like specific pattern or channels that you mandatorily have to go through in order to to do something you know if you want to write like literally right now grab you know you if you don't even have a notebook grab a fucking uh your little brother's crayon and fucking scribble something on the wall and like write something fucking grab a sticky pad grab you know the back of a fucking magazine or something and start writing on there like literally right now you can literally start right now this second to like write or draw something or or whatever the fuck it is that you're into um and you can and it doesn't have to be like this this big monumental fucking day that you circle on the calendar and this is the day that it all changed and on this day i wrote the fucking fucking war and peace in a day or so you know like whatever like it doesn't have to be like some crazy like big shit it could literally be like objectively looking back on it like a nothing moment but at the same time that nothing moment or where that you know it, nothing significant came out of it rather um aside from the fact that you began to push the momentum in that direction and like i was saying like the closing of these things like began taking steps in the direction of that dream and it could be you know just based on on some like trivial stupid shit like that and basically just stop wasting the time stop stop waiting for something that is really just an excuse like don't lie to yourself about that type of shit anymore you don't deserve it and um i know that because I, I did that to myself for for a long time and i didn't deserve that shit either um you're getting in in your own way and um you could be allowing like other people to be getting in your own way and like i have mentioned before if that's the case if it's you know certain people or or family or friends or like whatever it is just cut them the fuck off and get focused get focused on you and um um begin to catch up on lost time that um you've been making excuses for yourself on and i guess that's that's what that's about that's what that uh that particular post was about which which i still agree with and it's good to to revisit like this type of thing too because it's not like all right i started the podcast i started writing and shit like that so now that's it fucking i'm motivated forever i fucking still get lazy and shit all the time like this month actually i've been uh, really bad with uh with writing if you guys follow me on twitter you know that every like every month i i tweet out a picture of this like washboard calendar thing that i have here in front of me right now like in front of my computer on the wall where i literally put an x or a check mark on each and every day um you know x is representing days that i did not write and the check mark representing days that i did write and i'm looking looking at the calendar now it's the 20 uh this is coming out on what like the 23rd of april this comes out uh this episode and there's mad x marks fucking that's horrible i've been lazy as fuck this month and um and that's not good like the goal is with with this thing to like see it and to reinforce and motivate myself to write and to continue writing and i only do um you know do check marks when when you know i do some sort of like creative writing whether it's free writing or writing uh with a short story or or something like that um and then the days that i don't write anything like that i uh i get an x and i'm supposed to see these x's and motivate myself to write and sometimes i see a couple x's in a row like two or three days in a row and i'm like oh fuck you know fucking me desilusiono and like i don't 